Ray Douglas Bradbury was born on August 22, 1920, in Waukegan, Illinois, to Leonard and Esther Bradbury. Growing up in Waukegan was peaceful and idyllic, with relatives that lived nearby that Ray would visit and read books. His family moved several times from Waukegan to Tucson, Arizona, between the years 1926 and 1933. Early influences on Ray Bradbury were Edgar Allan Poe and the young Bradbury attempted to write like Poe. Other influences include Edgar Rice Burroughs, writer of the Barsom series, which featured the character John Carter from Mars. H.G. Wells, who is most notable for War of the Worlds, The Invisible Man, and Time Machine. James Verne, who wrote Around the World in 80 Days and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. In 1934, his parents moved Ray and his family to Los Angeles. Bradbury was 14 at the time and loved Los Angeles. Ray's favorite pastime was roller skating around Hollywood looking for celebrities. One such star, George Burns, met young Bradbury and paid Ray for a joke that Burns used in the show. While attending Los Angeles High School, Bradbury was active in drama, poetry club, and was involved with the Los Angeles Science Fiction League. After graduating high school, Bradbury sold newspapers during the day. In the evenings, Ray spent his time in the library reading and writing short stories of his own. The family could not afford college, and Bradbury already made up his mind that he was going to be a writer. In 1938, Imagination published Hall of Vulture's Dilemma. It was to be the first of Bradbury's published work and the beginning of his writing career. Bradbury started his own fan magazine, Futura Fitanja, in 1939. It consisted of four issues that Bradbury wrote much of the content. Super Science Stories published Ray's first paid story in 1941 titled Pendulum. Ray Bradbury was a contributing writer for Robert Wagner's film magazine script from 1940 to 1947. By the time Ray was 22, he was writing full time and sold his first novel, The Lake. Bradbury submitted many stories and many were rejected. But at Mademoiselle Magazine, a young editorial assistant, Truman Capote, read Bradbury's Homecoming and submitted it to be published for Mademoiselle Magazine. Homecoming won the Old Henry Award for Excellent Merit in 1947. Bradbury won other awards as well, including the National Medal of Arts in 2004, the highest award given to artists and art patrons by the United States government, presented by President George W. Bush and First Lady Laura Bush. The Martian Chronicles was published in 1950 and established Ray Bradbury as a science fiction writer. Later in his life, Ray remarked that he only wrote one science fiction novel. Fahrenheit 451. Bradbury is also quoted, Science fiction is a depiction of the real. Fancy is a depiction of the unreal. The Illustrated Man was published in 1951 and eventually developed into a film starring Rod Steiger. Mr. Ray Bradbury, the man who just described the nature of his writing, has been described by others as a space-age moralist and as the Louis Armstrong of science fiction. But neither of these labels provide an accurate clue to the contents of books like The Martian Chronicles and Fahrenheit 451, which have sold millions of copies. Nobody writes like Ray Bradbury, and the author of more than a dozen books and almost 300 short stories is truly one of a kind. Telescope found him at his home in a suburb of Los Angeles, where he writes every day, averaging a new story or article in print each month for the past quarter century. We also accompanied him on a trip to Disneyland with two of his four daughters, and to a movie studio where Rod Steiger was being made up for his starring role as the illustrated man, the latest Bradbury book to become a motion picture. The best representation of the writing wizard from Waukegan, Illinois, whose work combines nightmare and nostalgia, fantasy and fable, blending together into science fiction that is also social fiction, is the man himself, a man with a great gift of enthusiasm as you'll presently see and hear. Tonight's self-portrait by Ray Bradbury is not unlike the plot of his new movie. The Illustrated Man, as portrayed by Rod Steiger, is an attempt to uh, tell the story of a man who is trapped in his own skin with all these fabulous stories stitched onto it by a strange witch who is telling the future with a tattoo needle. 
The best known contribution that Ray Bradbury did was his novel Fahrenheit 451, published in 1953. A dystopian novel, Fahrenheit 451 is about a futuristic world that has a totalitarian government, but also went as far as banning the written word. Fahrenheit 451. The story that takes you into another world, another time. A provoking, exciting love story from the famed novel by Ray Bradbury. Fahrenheit 451. The motion picture that presents the darling of the stars, Academy Award winner Julie Christie, in a dual role portraying two women in love with the same man. Here she is as Clarice, the ardent rebel, and as Linda, the wife. Sensual, artless, beautiful. Linda, you're absolutely fantastic! She is indeed fantastic, as she stars with another award-winning favorite of the international cinema. Watch for him. Oscar Banner as Montag. How did it come about? How could someone like you be doing this kind of work? Fahrenheit 451. Co-stars Cyril Cusack, Anton Diffring. What have you got there? This your special book? It's got to be burned with the others and you're under arrest. It's brilliantly directed by Francois Truffaut, one of the leading young talents in world cinema. Calling all citizens. Wanted for murder, Montag. Occupation, fireman. Fahrenheit 451 is the film everyone will be talking about for its originality of treatment. Fahrenheit 451, the film of tomorrow, with the big stars of today, Julie Christie and Oscar Wenner. has contributed to more than 27 movies and over 600 stories in the science fiction and fantasy genre. Bradbury had written screenplays including Moby Dick for director John Huston. A prolific writer, Bradbury also wrote over 30 features, shorts, and television movies. Ray Bradbury Theater was written and hosted by Bradbury himself and aired from 1985 to 1995. People ask, where do you get your ideas? Right here. All of this is mine. I'll never starve here. I'm Ray Bradbury. And this is... I have what seems to be total recall from the moment of my birth, but if it should falter, the toys, the trivia that surround me in my workroom help me remember back 60 years. But what if I lost all these in a fire? Then I'd be forced to rely on sheer memory alone. But what about everyone else? Would they choose to remember or prefer to forget? Would my memories be a threat to them? To find the answer, I wrote to the Chicago Abyss. Ray Bradbury was happiest when he was writing and continued to write until his death on June 5, 2012 at the age of 91.